when it comes to putting together lives, adult and teen challenges doing it every single day in the most unusual of ways. Jean Garcia joins us right now for Adult and Teen Challenge. And we're going to talk about some things that you've got going on right here at home in Rutherford County in Murfreesboro, correct? Yeah. Tell me a little bit, what is Adult and Teen Challenge for the people who don't know? Sure, yeah. Adult and Teen Challenge is a faith-based residential, well, we like calling it a faith-based recovery group, but it's really, you know, it's a rehabilitation program. It's inpatient. It's a uh, 12 months long, and it's, you know, they get uh, at this program, they're going to get, the men in the program are going to learn life coping skills by biblical principles. They're going to learn just because they're having a bad day. That doesn't mean they need to go do bad things. Mm. Um, they're they're going to learn that their identity is not what people say about them or what they think about themselves or what their past is, but they're going to learn their identity in Christ. Amen. Becoming new, just becoming new people. Let's yeah. talk about some of the things that you do with some of these guys. Like I loved this picture that I saw. Um, their guys getting ready to serve. Yes. <laughs> Washing cars. Just one of the things, it's kind of a, an out of the box thinking when we think about recovery, sometimes we don't think about the service aspect. Um, if you have never done a recovery program, you look at it and you go, well, how do these service programs, how do the, these activities help with recovery? Can you answer and give yeah. us an idea why they work? Absolutely. So, you know, a lot, majority of the people who come into this program have been on drugs for a long time. They forgot how to function in society. They forgot how to function without a drug. They have they just have no idea. They're so used to be totally dependent and relying on that drug. So what, how this program is designed, they come into the program, it's kind of a culture shock at first. Mm -hmm. You know, they come into the program, they have to, you know, super structured and super disciplined. They have to wake up at a certain time. They have to follow the schedule. They have to be at breakfast at a certain time. They have to do devotions at a certain time. And then they have a class in the morning, and uh, which, you know, teaches biblical principles and different things about identity and then after that they have to go to work now the first eight months of the program you saw the guys in the car wash they actually work for the ministry and that's part of the program but it's designed that way to make sure that they're actually able to function in that type of environment because as we're all aware of there's stress and different things happen and you in, you encounter different people and, and most of the time these men are used to going when something don't go wrong something don't go right maybe smoking another cigarette or maybe going doing another line or shooting another whatever and at this program you know you can't do that you gotta learn how to function without that and just rely on the strength of god and rely on the things you learn in the program instead of relying on the old way of doing things mm -hmm. so and then after the first the last eight first eight months the first because there's three stages of the program and after the there's the induction phase there's the advanced phase and there's a re-entry phase. Now, for the first two stages, you know, it's uh, super strict and st structured. Last four months, it gets a little less. But th before the men go to any stage of the program, the staff, the directors get together and they have a discussion. And they make sure to see if these men are ready to move to the next stage. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable when it comes to recovery. And that's what we want to let people know that there are options out there that are affordable, that are faith-based, which is what this is. It takes us, I always say it takes it a step further. It's like the 13th step. You take us a little bit, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. And that 13th step is Jesus. And, and I think that's one of the reasons that your program is so ex just successful with the people that are there. Now, what are the ages and uh, do you only take men in your program? Well, the ages, yeah. For Heartland Adult and Teen Challenge, we only take men 18 years old and up. Um, I, I do refer women to another Adult and Teen Challenge, which is a women's center. So if a woman okay. does contact me and she does, you know, she does want help, 
Um, I'm going to refer her to the Women's Center. Beautiful. That's important. There's nothing more hopeless than being a family member or loving someone who is addicted and knowing that you can't do anything to help them, but knowing that there's someone out there throwing you a lifeline, which is what Adult and Teen Challenge is, because they actually do know how to help. Yeah. And, you know, um, I know it really works because I went through the program myself. So What? Yeah, yeah. Wow. I went through the program. I was addicted to heroin and opioids and you name it. I pretty much did it. And I'm not ashamed to say it because it's my testimony. And, you know, I want people to know that there is hope. And his name is Jesus. And in the Bible says, you know, who the sun sets free is free indeed. And it also says what may be impossible for man is possible for God. And, you know, I tried every which way to get away from that lifestyle. I tried every which way. I tried... Uh, chemical replacements. I tried committing myself to a hospital. I tried everything and anything that I could possibly think of. I tried cold turkey on my own strength. None of it worked until I submitted to the worship of Jesus Christ. I was actually ended up on the street with nothing. And then I ended up in a uh, uh, hotel room. The state put me up in a hotel room and, uh, you know, a pastor that was in my life, very influential person in my life. Um, they told me one time, you know, if you get serious with God, he'll get serious with you. And I remember being in that hotel room, pacing back and forth. And, you know, I was withdrawn. I was coming off of drugs, prescription mm -hmm. drugs. I was prescribed also uh, nicotine, smoking many packs of cigarettes a day. And I'm pacing back and forth. And I literally saying to myself, I don't know what to do with myself. But that thought kept on going through my head. If you get serious with God, he'll get serious with you. So I threw my hands up. I looked at the ceiling. I said, all right, God, that's it. You win. And I said, I surrender all. Let thy kingdom come, thy will be done. I fell to my knees. I cried my eyes out. But this time I meant it. I wasn't doing it for a show. I wasn't doing it to please somebody else. I was, in a, I was at the bottom. I was in desperation. I didn't want to live like that no more. I knew that there was no way out but God. And sure enough, um, I, I don't re I remember actually I had like a, a series of things happened in the hotel room and I had a shooting pain in my chest and stabbing going down my left and my hands really bad. I believe I was having a heart attack. And, you know, thank God for grandma. Years ago, she said she taught me, you know, calling the name of Jesus. So I remember I laid on my bed there in that room and I just called on the name of Jesus. Now, I don't know what happened, but I fell asleep. I woke up the next day. I had a peace I never had before. Um, there was a presence in the room before, you know, Christians, we call it the manifest presence of God. And uh, I called up the pastor and I said, listen, I don't know what to do. I give my heart to God. Nice as possible. That pastor said, oh, Gene, you've done that before. I said, no, you don't understand. Something happened this time. So he said, okay, well, I'm going to pray. You pray. I'll get back to you. They got back to me. They go, do you know what Teen Challenge is? I said, no. They said, I don't need, I don't either. But that's where God wants you to go. So I ended up going with a go that pastor took me to the program, a laundry bag with dirty clothes, um, with a grain of hope. And I uh, went through the program after I went through the program, I continued on with the ministry and continued going to school. Um, now I'm the outreach director for all Heartland Adult and Teen Challenge. Um, also a credentialed reverend. I say, well, let's say this, if, and I'm talking to everybody who's gonna end up seeing this, if God could change my life, he could change your life. And at this program, you're gonna learn, you're not, you don't, you don't only have the potential to get free, but there's something that we have to do to continue to stay free. We gotta make the right choices every day. You'll learn in the program that God will give you more than what you need if you follow his instructions to stay free. That'll preach. <laughs> uh, I mean, I got Holy Spirit tears during your your testimony there. Thank you for being so forthright and sharing that because it's, you know, we'll overcome through the words of our testimony. And Amen. That's, that's the deal. And, you know, if I were going to go somewhere, I if someone had never had my same problem, I don't know that I would believe them. But when they've walked the walk and they've come through on the other side, you know that when they throw out a lifeline, they know where exactly where you are. Yeah. Oh, wow. So thank you for your time, Gene. You, you're shining the light. You're shining the light. 
Thank you for having me. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much.